Today, we're diving into one of the most tantalizing puzzles in mathematics, the Riemann hypothesis. Ever heard of it? Proposed by Bernhard Riemann back in 1859, this hypothesis revolves around something called the Riemann zeta function, denoted as zeta s. Now, I know what you're thinking. What's a zeta function? Well, it's a function that takes complex numbers as inputs and spits out complex numbers as outputs. Here's where it gets interesting. The Riemann zeta function has zeros, points where the function equals zero. Some of these zeros are trivial, like the negative even integers such as negative two, negative four, negative six, and so on. But the real mystery lies in the non-trivial zeros. The Riemann hypothesis suggests that all these non-trivial zeros have a real part of 1 over 2. And, if proven true, this hypothesis isn't just some obscure math problem, it's part of Hilbert's eighth problem in David Hilbert's list of 23 unsolved problems. And it's also one of the Clay Mathematics Institute's Millennium Prize problems. Solve it, and you're not just a millionaire, you're a legend. This is where things get truly fascinating. You see, the Riemann hypothesis isn't just an isolated puzzle. It's part of a much bigger picture involving something called L functions. Ever heard of Dirichlet L series? Or perhaps global L functions? These are like the big siblings of the Riemann zeta function, and they play a crucial role in what we call the generalized Riemann hypothesis. They are complex functions similar to the Riemann zeta function, but they apply to a broader set of mathematical objects. When we talk about the generalized Riemann hypothesis, we're essentially extending the idea of the Riemann hypothesis to all Dirichlet L functions. This means that we expect the non-trivial zeros of these global L functions to also have a real part of 1 over 2. But wait, there's more. The generalized Riemann hypothesis also implies that something called Siegel zeros Zeros that might exist between 0.5 and 1 do not actually exist. And it doesn't stop there. The extended Riemann hypothesis takes this concept even further by applying it to all Dedekind zeta functions of algebraic number fields. Let's delve into yet another fascinating realm. Function fields and zeta functions of varieties over finite fields. In 1924, mathematician Emile Artin introduced global zeta functions of quadratic function fields and made a groundbreaking conjecture, an analog of the Riemann hypothesis for these function fields. Helmut Hasse proved the conjecture for the genus one case, and later, André Weil extended this proof to cover all cases in 1948. To give you a concrete example, consider the Gauss sum of the quadratic character of a finite field of size q, where q is odd. The absolute value of this Gauss sum is under root q, and this is actually an instance of the Riemann hypothesis within the function field setting. Fast forward to the 1970s and 1980s, and we see the culmination of this mathematical journey. Pierre Deligne, a brilliant mathematician, proved the resulting vile conjectures in 1974 and 1980. In 1956, the renowned mathematician Atle Selberg introduced the Selberg zeta function of a Riemann surface. They possess a functional equation and an infinite product similar to the Euler product, but with a twist. Instead of being taken over prime numbers, the infinite product is taken over closed geodesics on the Riemann surface. The trace formula beautifully connects the geometric properties of the Riemann surface with the spectral properties of the Laplacian operator. He also proved that the Selberg zeta functions satisfy an analog of the Riemann hypothesis. Specifically, the imaginary parts of their zeros are related to the eigenvalues of the Laplacian operator on the Riemann surface. We now turn our attention to an idea proposed by two eminent mathematicians. David Hilbert and George Polia. Hilbert and Polia suggested that one possible approach to proving the Riemann hypothesis could involve operator theory. Specifically, they hypothesized that the zeros of the Riemann zeta function might correspond to the eigenvalues of a certain self-adjoint operator. In this context, the self-adjoint operator would have real eigenvalues, 
and this property could be leveraged to assert that the non-trivial zeros of the zeta function lie on the critical line, where the real part of ES equals one-half. This idea gains traction from various analogs of the Riemann zeta function, where zeros are indeed linked to eigenvalues of specific operators. For instance, consider the zeta function of a variety over a finite field. Here, the zeros correspond to eigenvalues of a Frobenius element acting on an etale cohomology group. Similarly, as we discussed in the previous scene, the zeros of the Selberg zeta function align with the eigenvalues of the Laplacian operator on a Riemann surface. Moreover, in the realm of p-adic zeta functions, the zeros are associated with eigenvectors of a Galois action on ideal class groups. As we continue our journey through the intricate landscape of mathematical conjectures and theories, we come across another fascinating connection that might shed light on the elusive Riemann hypothesis. This time, we delve into the realm of statistical mechanics and the Li-Yang theorem. The Li-Yang theorem, a cornerstone in statistical mechanics, states that the zeros of certain partition functions all lie on a critical line with their real part equal to zero. This remarkable result has led to some speculation about a potential relationship with the Riemann hypothesis. In statistical mechanics, partition functions play a crucial role in describing the thermodynamic properties of systems. The Li-Yang theorem asserts that for many physical systems, these zeros lie on a specific line in the complex plane, mirroring the critical line where the non-trivial zeros of the Riemann zeta function are conjectured to lie. Could there be a deeper, underlying principle that governs the distribution of zeros in both statistical mechanics and number theory? As we approach the final leg of our journey through the enigmatic world of the Riemann hypothesis, it's crucial to consider the diverse perspectives mathematicians hold about its validity. Mathematical papers on the Riemann hypothesis tend to be cautiously non-committal. Yet, among those who express an opinion, the sentiments are varied. Most mathematicians, including Riemann himself in 1859 and Bombieri in 2000, hope or expect the hypothesis to be true. However, notable skeptics like Evich in 2008 list reasons for doubt, and Littlewood in 1962 flatly declared his belief that it is false, citing a lack of evidence or any conceivable reason for its truth. Survey articles suggest a consensus that while the evidence supporting the Riemann hypothesis is strong, it is not overwhelming. Thus, while it is probably true, reasonable doubt remains. On the supportive side, several analogs of the Riemann hypothesis have already been proven. De Ligne's proof in 1974 for varieties over finite fields stands as one of the strongest theoretical reasons in favor of the Riemann hypothesis. This supports the broader conjecture that all zeta functions associated with automorphic forms satisfy a Riemann hypothesis, including the classical one. Similarly, the Selberg zeta functions, which have a functional equation and an infinite product expansion analogous to the Euler product, satisfy an analog of the Riemann hypothesis. However, not all evidence is positive. Some Epstein zeta functions, while similar to the Riemann zeta function, do not satisfy the Riemann hypothesis, lacking an Euler product and not being directly related to automorphic representations. Numerical verification that many zeros lie on the critical line initially seems like strong evidence, but history in analytic number theory has shown that conjectures, even with substantial numerical evidence, can be false. The skews number is a notorious example, where a plausible conjecture related to the Riemann hypothesis likely fails at around 10,316, far beyond current computational capabilities. Further calculations by Odlisko in 1987 show that the zeros of the zeta function behave similarly to the eigenvalues of a random Hermitian matrix, suggesting they could be eigenvalues of a self-adjoint operator, which would imply the Riemann hypothesis. Yet, all attempts to find such an operator have failed. There are also instances where the generalized Riemann hypothesis has been used to prove theorems such as Goldbach's weak conjecture, 
which were later shown to be true unconditionally. This could be seen as weak evidence for the generalized Riemann hypothesis, as several of its predictions turned out to be accurate. On the flip side, Lemur's phenomenon, where two zeros are very close, is sometimes cited as a reason to disbelieve the Riemann hypothesis. However, Odlisko's calculations suggest that nearby pairs of zeros occur as often as predicted by Montgomery's conjecture. Patterson suggests that the most compelling reason for many mathematicians to believe in the Riemann hypothesis is the hope that primes are distributed as regularly as possible.